What's up home slice Lucas here in this video I'm going to show you 10 different ways we can help increase our grip strength, wrist strength, hand strength, forearm strength. Pay attention I'm going to share with you 10 different forms of exercise and movement some of those you may not expect. But you gotta focus. All right but first let's get started with an obvious one but a fun one. These grip trainers. These grip trainers come in various forms and they do work by helping you train that simple hand squeeze strength. Got this little adjustable one right here. It goes from apparently 20 pounds of grip to 90 pounds of grip. Some of the more serious folk out there might be more familiar with these, however, the Captains of Crush grip strength trainers. You can get them at different levels. This is a two, which is approximately 200 pounds of squeeze force to fully close this. You can do workouts where you just do reps or you can squeeze and try to hold for a certain amount of time. Be sure you do each hand. And that brings me to number two, which is hand balance. So just like you use your toes, your feet, your ankles, your calves to help you balance while you're standing up, you use your fingers, your hand, your wrist, your forearm to help you balance while in a handstand-like position or any other hand balance position for that matter. Also, that's something to think about if you're struggling with doing a handstand, you might want to consider using more grip to help you balance and steady your base while on the ground, which can help you hold a handstand longer. Boom. Number three, consciously gripping the ground while doing push-ups or any other form of body weight exercise where you close the chain by putting your hand on the ground. Now you want to do this sparingly because if you focus too much on grip at too many different angles, too quickly, too often, you could get problems with your wrist, obviously. But just like any other overuse injury, the way to avoid it is just to listen to your body and not overuse it too fast at first. I mean, you can literally get an overuse injury sitting on the couch, resting your arm on the armrest. Cubital tunnel syndrome, I've been there. Just so stupid. Number four, the hang. Hanging from a pull-up bar, hanging from a tree branch, or pulling exercises where you have to hold your body weight up. So it doesn't have to be hanging for time, you can also just be doing pull-ups, static core movements hanging from a bar, etc., etc. Now with that being said, you can change this up plenty of ways and challenge yourself more or less. Keep confusing the body, confusing the mind, confusing the forearms. Pull thickness is one, so this is a more skinny pull, <laughs> which may be easier for some. Going to one of those soccer nets, finding a bar that's wider that is generally harder to hang from and can challenge your grip more so. Also something that can increase difficulty is whether the bar spins freely or not. This bar kind of spins freely, so it's a little bit harder to hang from here rather than like a pull-up bar that's nice and stiff. Also the stippling on the bar, is stippling a word? I mean like that grippy stuff that's on a bar, whether it's there or not can increase or decrease the difficulty. You get the gist, change up your grip here and there, experiment with stuff, you can use rings, anything where you're hanging, you're holding your body weight up for time, is gonna challenge your grip, increase that grip strength. Next, holding a barbell or dumbbells for time. Now obviously this is gonna challenge grip because you have to hold on to the barbell or dumbbells in order to lift them off the ground, as long as you're not using wrist straps or any other form of a cheating. Holding a barbell with weights on it or a dumbbell off the ground for time will challenge your grip strength, your hand strength, your finger strength, if it's not hard by approximately 30 to 45 seconds, you might want to increase the weight. Also something to take into consideration is your thumb positioning. You can practice and hold with your thumb wrapped around in the back like that, or you can do that death grip like this with the thumbs over. Also something to take into consideration. If you start doing this to increase your time, maybe just put it down, okay? Also some people might like um, behind the back like this. Just don't hurt yourself. You shouldn't hurt yourself with this grip strength training, okay? It's for time. You're going for a long period of time. It's gonna help you out. So additional to the barbell, you can use like bumper plates or something like this, something with a more wider grip. It's all up to you, oh man. Whew. Probably one of the most classic ways for the grip strength, wrist strength, forearm strength approach. The forearm curl. I feel like a lot of people expect this one to help put on size to the forearm, but I do have to say also based on my experience, this simple exercise of the forearm curl this way and then also balancing it out with a reverse curl, remember to do that, opposite side, has seemed to prevent me from getting additional wrist injuries ever since I started implementing these on either like a weekly or bi-weekly basis um, since about 2013. So these have seemed to actually help strengthen my wrist, believe it or not, which is something people seem to not think of using this exercise for. It seems to be a pure bodybuilding exercise. However, it's just classic. It's easy to do. It's simple. I like it when you go into it, not like this, but nice 90 degree angle at the arms and also use your fingers to 
help curl it up and then let it down. So I use my fingers. And then when I do the opposite way, I just use my wrist, but I try to get that full range of motion throughout the back end of the wrist, back end of the arm. You can use a barbell for this, you can use dumbbells. You can also use any form of resistance that you find will work, like a resistance band or a book bag with books in it, weighted something. However, I found things like a kettlebell to not really work too well because you kind of want something with like an even distribution of weight or something that will turn in your hand or can be easily manipulated by your hand. So like a book bag, the strap will kind of like conform to the motion. But a kettlebell, you know, it's like, it, you'd have to let it slip in your hand. It's just common sense, all right? Boom. Another way I like to approach this, if you're uncomfortable with putting your arms over a bench, is you can actually sit down where you get your legs at this, you know, 90 degree angle, just so the top of your leg is straight like this. You can actually rest your forearms um, right on the inside of your legs like this. And you can pick up your resistance as so, and then just kind of stabilizing everything, getting into the right position. You can then focus on that wrist and finger strength. And you can do this the opposite way as well. Boom. Look at that all natty wrist. All right guys, next. So I came over to Russell's house for this one. If you know, you know. The water bottle squeeze. As stupid as that sounds, literally, if you had an empty water bottle and ice mountain, those make the best water bottles for water bottle squeezing. Also cap popping, which is something you might need to be cautious of if you're squeezing it really hard. Be sure the cap doesn't pop off and hit you in the eye. It, it might sound stupid, but a water bottle is so cheap to acquire and you can really do this exercise anywhere, anytime, however long you want. No gym required. And I feel like it's extremely effective for increasing grip strength, at the least for blowing off some steam if you just get, get angry, you know what I mean? So, I mean, you can do this many different ways, holding it out in front of you and trying to squeeze it, bringing it in close right here and trying to squeeze it, or down to the side and trying to squeeze it. Stimulate that forearm grip strength. I know it might sound stupid, but guys, it's cheap, it's a water bottle, it's effective. Seriously, you don't believe me, give it a try. Try to crush that plastic water bottle with just one hand. I do not recommend doing this with a glass bottle or any bottle that has anything sharp on it. Common sense, so, so lacking these days, but gosh, you gotta, okay. Palming, oh, that's hard for me and my small hands. Palming for time, yeah, most classically basketball, but if your hands are small like mine, maybe a soccer ball, I don't have one, a volleyball, something like that, doesn't even have to be that. Could also be just a can of something. I don't know, like a wide can, wide can of tomatoes, don't drop it on your toes. Palming for time, out front can challenge your grip strength, similar to how you held the barbell for time or how you hung from a bar for time. However, because you have to have your hand at such a wide, diameter. When you're trying to hold something that's so wide for time, you're challenging your grip strength differently than holding something that may be heavier but is more narrow. If you don't believe me, give it a try. It's a lot different. You can start like this, easiest, and try to squeeze it. Go to the side, try to hold it, and then go all the way up like this, and then back and back. Almost dropped that, man. These little small, sweaty, slippery hands. <laughs> Kevin, man. Kevin. All right, number nine, probably by far the most important one and probably by far the one that nobody does, but give it a shot, it's gonna improve you greatly. Number nine is coordination of the hands. I believe that a lot of us looking to improve our strength often overlook coordination. However, if you focus on coordination as well with strength, you can use them to push and bump each other up even higher and higher. So simple coordination exercise I have for you. Focus on one hand at a time and what you wanna do is just, you can start with your pinky or thumb, it doesn't matter. Try to bring that finger in without moving any other finger. Do you see how my finger started to move? So what you're really working on is you're working on that mind muscle connection, that nervous system distinction between the limbs or the fingers in this case. You're actually really exercising your brain, your body, your coordination, and it's just something we often overlook. Look at, watch, I try to bring my pinky in and my ring finger wants to, wants to flex in like that. So I have to consciously think about keeping that straight. And I go with my ring finger, and look, you can see my other finger starting to twitch. It's harder than it looks. Thumb is probably the easiest one to do. Be sure you do both hands. Oh my gosh. You guys, give this a try, it's a challenge. You'll be challenging your coordination, your focus, and in my opinion, everything comes up together as one, so if you can improve your coordination, you'll improve your strength, your speed, your overall well-being. All right, guys, and finally, look at this. I just rigged this up in like three minutes. Yeah, just disregard this big chunk of junk right there, all right? I didn't want to have to cut the rope, all right? I didn't want to, have to cut these, all right? So I'm gonna use these for something else. So yeah, basically got a bar right here, a rope, and then on the bottom of the rope, we have weight. Just knotted that on there, because that's how we do things. Hold out in front like this, and you curl it up. All right, just using your wrists and forearms. 
we're trying to isolate them as much as possible. See? Bringing that weight up. Boom. This is a great forearm workout. I can already feel the burn. Now depending on which way the rope is going, that's the side of the forearm you're going to be working. So if the rope's on this side, I'm going to be working more of the under belly of the forearm. If the rope is in front, I'm going to be working more of the top of the forearm to bring it up. Man, I might keep this like this. That actually works really well. <laughs> I just wanted that for demonstration purposes, but dang. All right, bonus, bonus. Rope climbing, rock climbing, climbing trees even. Just be careful, don't fall out. <laughs> Don't fall out. Seriously, the act of climbing challenges not only strength, but also coordination and that full body connectivity to help get you up. But it really, really challenges grip strength, finger strength, forearm strength, um, whether it be rope climbing, rock climbing, or even just climbing a tree. This one is fun and effective. Let me know if you want me to make more videos like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was informative, entertaining, and gave you some new options on how to train. I am making videos on at least a weekly basis, so stay tuned, be ready for some more stuff coming out. Check out my other videos. I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.